What's up, everybody? What's going on? How we doing? Just doing. So we're going to have an awesome conversation here today with two amazing men, brothers, founders. Do we look alike? <laughs> a little <laughs> bit. And the conversation is going to be oriented around how we optimize our mindset for peak performance. And these are experts here with regards to getting that extra edge, leveraging the mental game as that key weapon. So I just want to jump in, but you know, first, Russ, I was having a conversation about this like two weeks ago with your brother, and he was saying, yeah, yeah, like Russ, he's, you know, amazing quarterback, one of the best to ever play the game, but 5'10", like at best, he should have been a midfielder in like double-A baseball. Like, how, how, how do you react to that, you know, that, that sibling rivalry, and how is it growing up? Well, first and of all, I'm kind of pissed off he's talking about my height. <laughs> <laughs> he's been rubbing it in ever since we've known each other. I mean, um, but no, I, I think that um, God gifted me with talent to play football and baseball. It was kind of one of the hardest decisions in my life, actually, ironically, because you have this opportunity, you know, you're possibly a, a high draft pick in baseball and everything else, and everybody's telling you you suck at football. There's no way. You're too small. Um, and so I think that, um, but deep down inside, you kind of know, hey, I, I have this ability to do something special. So, um, yeah, God gave me big hands, and I could throw the ball a long ways and put it on the money. So, um, you know, it's just kind of amazing how it works out. But I think the, the mindset part of it was everything for me. I, you know, I've always, since we were young, I mean, we didn't have much growing up, and I think a lot of it was uh, knowing that no matter what, you know, no matter what I do in life, no matter what I'm doing that day, no matter what it is, I'm going to give everything I got and leave it all there. And I don't have anything else. Like I, I'm going to give everything I have. And so uh, from doing that, I just was able to um, go places that other people weren't willing to go. Yeah. And I think that's, um, that's just kind of how my, my mindset is. And, mm -hmm. and I learned a lot from my brother. My brother used to block my shot every time. Go, <laughs> every I'd time. go in the lane, you know. He'd, <laughs> he'd, he'd stuff my shot and, and, and rub it in and rub my head in the dirt. And then I, you know, so a lot of that was uh, us growing up, too. Well, well, you know, Kobe, I mean, the reason why you know, were tongue-in-cheek saying, you know, like, listen, at best, Russell should play, be playing double-A baseball in, like, Modesto, California somewhere, right? Yeah. That's where the Colorado Rockies were drafted by the Colorado Rockies. That literally is where I think their double-A or triple-A team is, right? But, <laughs> but I, I think that... You know, really tongue-in-cheek because, you know, success leaves clues, right? I mean, um, Russell, not only is he playing in the NFL, but he's the winningest quarterback in NFL history through the first 10 years of anybody, anybody's career, right? 113 wins, I believe. I think Peyton's got 112, right? That doesn't happen on accident, yep. you know, just like this community we're in today, venture capital, founders, operators, like the success that you see, the difference between, you know, having a nice business and a nice run and versus IPOing, a lot of times is, is those, those times in the middle, right? Now, discuss a little bit about, you guys starting a company together. Yeah. Like, explain to us a little bit that process, how it was to team up with your brother. And well, it. it was kind of a crazy, fun thing. You know, we, we obviously grew up together and all that kind of stuff. But what, what happened was I was in the backyard of that house in Seattle. We were looking at the water. It was summertime. And, you know, Harry was kicking butt in pharmaceutical sales. He was one of the, 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 the biggest pharmaceutical sales managers in the, in the country mm -hmm. and making a lot of money at it and doing really well. And, his, and he's got three beautiful daughters and everything else and his wife. And so we're sitting in the back. We're just talking about life. We're talking about our dad, talking about family, talking about sports, talking about success, talking about all those things. And I'll never forget, uh, you know, I was asking Harry what's next, you know. And he said, you know, I, I never forget this. He said, you know, I, I want to take a risk. Mm. And I said, well, what do you mean? And we, you know, I said, well, you know, I want to I do something where I can improve people's lives. Mm -hmm. At the same time, my mental coach, Trevor Moad, and I had been talking about, I had been with him for 10, 10 years or whatever. Well, I've been, I've been with him for like 10, 11 years now at this point. But going back, this was, I don't know, eight years into it, me and him. And so anyways, we, as we, me and Trevor have been talking about, hey, how do, we, how do we make an impact on the world? How do we talk yep. about mindset? Yep. And we always believed in this thought. And so anyways, I told, I told Harry, and, and he told me, hey, let's, Let's partner up together. Let's, let's yeah. create a business together. <laughs> sure enough, two days later, we had this new company called Limbless Minds, and it's been taking off like, like, like skyrockets like, ever since. It's been amazing because, you know, I think the, the pro thought process is, has been that, you know, we want to be able to democratize mindset, and how do we do that? And I think that this thought process, and I'll, I'll kind of break this down for you guys, but, you know, I'm, I'm a positive person by nature. I think you guys can probably tell. You probably made, made me know that. I'm definitely positive, whatever. But the thing is, is that when you're down in a game, you're down 14, or when somebody has cancer, or when COVID's happening, it's really freaking hard to be positive, right? And the reality is, is that it's really natural and, uh, that, that, that to be negative, right? What we do know is that 100% of the time, negativity works. 100% of the time. Being negative works 100% of the time. So what we found along the way with Trevor and Harry, myself, uh, DJ, other co-founder, is that the reality is that we want to be able to talk about this idea around neutral thinking. 
The greatest performers, you know, in the world, they're neutral when the game's on the line. It, whether if it's business, whether if it's life, whether it's parents, wh- no matter what it is. And I think that one of the things that, that's, that, that people struggle with is that when you're Steph Curry and you're at the free throw line, all right, and, you, and he misses a free throw, which is rare, if he misses a free throw, well, what is Steph Curry? He's like a 94% free throw shooter. So if he misses one and the game's on the line, does it mean that he sucks? Yeah. No. It just means that he's still a 94% free throw shooter and he's got to shoot one more. Right? And so to me, I think that one of the things that we talk about quite often is, is that how do you train your mind? And, and the other thing is, is really critical is how do you train your words? Language is everything. So if, I, if we're all sitting in the room right here, and, I, and let's just say we're all playing a game together and we're all in the soccer field together or whatever it may be, and I keep telling them, I suck today. I'm not, I'm not very good. I, oh, man, all this stuff's going on in my world outside of this. Oh, I'm not very good, man. I, I don't, just don't have it today. Or I can say, you know, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And so that's neutral language. That's the ability to be able to gravitate your teammates, to gravitate your coworkers, gravitate your family, the people that, you, that you're around every day, and influence them with the right language. And there's a difference, like I said, between positive, negative, and neutral. And neutral is championship language. And so that's what we talk about in a very simplistic way. And I'll let Harry to talk about more about the business thought process of it. But that's my mindset on game day. Yeah, that's great. And just to, to note, Trevor is an individual that was actually graced to a stage here about three years ago at Upfront Summit. Unfortunately, passed away uh, this past year. But he's someone that really spread the notion of neutral thinking in a manner that impacted me personally in a way that I can't even sort of express. Yeah. And just been a very dear good friend. And speaking of Trevor, you know, Trevor used to always say this one thing. You don't have to be sick to get better. You don't have to be sick to get better. We all, we all have a mind. We all have an ability to process, right? We all have an opportunity to, to change our environments. And so the, w- the way we speak, the way we act, our body language, the, the way we think about things, right, and how we think about it neutrally really affects everyone we're around. Whether if you're a CEO, whether if you're the, the, the lowest person on the totem pole, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. How we think about it and how we lead is everything. So we don't have to be sick to get better, and that's what we're f- focused on. Yep. Harry, talk a little bit about Limitless Minds. Yeah. How do you work with some of the people like here in the room? Well, I mean, you know, Limitless, uh, when we started a few years ago in 2017, 2018, we weren't a... Um, you know, we weren't setting out to be a tech company or a consulting company. We were, test, we were trying to come out and say, like, how, do we, how do we take what's worked for an athlete like Russell and bring it to the masses, right? What, what kind of audience is, gonna, is this going to um, resonate with? I was in, as, as, as Russell mentioned, pharmaceutical sales, you know, interviewing people, building teams, and recognized that there was a correlation between what was needed at the corporate space for these corporate athletes, right? And so what we ended up creating is this company that really is a, is a mindset and wellness technology company, right? And so... What, what, what really what you can think about is we're, a, we're like a Peloton for mental fitness, right? A place where you can go and get access to mental conditioning experts, coaches, um, have on-demand content, curriculum, mindset exercises, activities that you can do as daily work, daily, daily habits, daily hygiene. Because honestly, mindset, it's not even about mental toughness, it's about mental conditioning or mental fitness, you know, which, which requires you to put in daily work. So that's what we're asking users to do is put in daily work, reward them for that daily work, and then give them access to some of the best and brightest athletes, performers, um, and, you know, experts in the, on the globe, right? And so that's really what we're providing. And at the B2B level, you know, we're, we're, we're working with organizations across the enterprise. The platform's now allowing us to, 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 to give access to employees in a way that's scalable, um, that they can leverage every day. And we, we built this company before COVID, right? Yeah. Not, not realizing that, you know, we'd be in this, you know, post-COVID world where this war on talent, obviously the buzzwords of great resignation are out here, but we've kind of flipped it to the, really the great reinvention. So we're, we're trying to allow companies to not, not dodge the great resignation, but to win the great reinvention, right? Allow people to elevate their mindset so they can perform at their highest level. And I think if you're an organization today and you're trying to retain talent and attract the best, you, you better have a solution in this area, right? Because, you know, you, you hear that, that cliche culture, yep. you know, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Well, it's real, yep. right? And so this is a part of the strategy. You have to have a mindset strategy for your people. So that's, that's ultimately what we're, what we're being able to do is help retain and attract the best talent for people, for companies, um, make sure they're fulfilled when they get there and, and ultimately perform better. Yeah. Now, Russ, one thing I've just been so inspired by your work is not just the work on the field, but off the field. Yeah. And the fact that being the elite quarterback, the level you're at there, but still having the time to be present as a father, a husband, for your community, and all these conflicting forces, or maybe perceived conflicting forces, the guards to the balance in your time. And you've been recognized 
by the NFL and your peers at the highest level with regards to this past year, winning the Bart Starr Award, last year winning the Walton Payton Man of the, Man of the Year Award. I mean, these are some of the highest honors in the sport. And how do you balance all that time in a way where you're yeah. really operating at the most elite level in everything you do, but especially those areas where you can be enriching others and serving others? Well, uh, first of all, I appreciate that. I, I think that um, what I've found in life and I've found in, in trying to be the best in the world, there is no such thing as balance. There really isn't balance, right? Now, like, yeah, people can quote unquote balance your time. Ah, I, I look at it as being efficient with my time, mm -hmm. but there's not really any balance. Like, you know, my wild obsession of being great in football, that's the number one priority in terms of, you know, all the things I get to do, right? God gave me an, a tremendous gift and the window was small. Right? I want to play another 12 years. That's it. It's over. It's done. Right? I mean, I, my goal is to play 20 plus years in the game. Now, that's a long time in the <laughs> football years because they say when you first walk onto the stage and you, you have the rookie symposium, you're all sitting there and the guy walks onto the stage, stage and he tells you the first thing you hear as a rookie, what does the NFL stand for? And you're like, well, all of us are like, National <laughs> Football League. This guy. <laughs> and then you realize, he goes, no, you're wrong. And we're like, okay. Like, he goes, not for long. <laughs> not for not long. long. He repeats himself. Not for long, three times. And so to me, before then, because of my parents and how we, how we were raised, I was already thinking about plan A. There's only one plan A, right? It's obviously be successful but, you know, in football, but also in everything else I do, everything I touch. So for me, uh, when I got landed in Seattle, I got drafted April 27, 2012. May 10th, I took off to Seattle. May 11th, I, uh, I called Seattle Children's Hospital and said, hey, you know, can I come to Seattle Children's? And they're like, uh, yeah, sure. Like, you can come. Who are you? Like, I was a third-round pick, 75th pick overall. Like, you're not the starting quarterback. I'm like, thanks. You know? And so, uh, so anyways, fast forward, um, I go get to see five, six kids, and it was an amazing, amazing experience. But then uh, next thing you know, um, you know, that, that following Tuesday, um, I, I end up seeing those kids, and I say, I said, ma'am, can I, can I get, keep coming back? And she's like, sure, but I, I don't. I don't. I still don't even know who you are. Like, <laughs> you know. So I, I think that going back to what your question is, is like for me, what I found is, is that what's important to me. What's what are my priorities? And I had somebody once tell me, you know, um, you know, a, a really a Hall of Famer tell me once that you can only give a hundred percent to so many things, uh -huh. right? And that those things should be listed on your hand. Number one thing was 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 my faith. Number a uh, hundred percent there. Hundred percent to my career. A hundred percent to my wife. A hundred percent to my family and kids and those around me that I care about. And then the last thing was my community. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's, that's kind of on my hand, right? And so I'm super passionate about in influencing, impacting people. And I think that's the thing that we get to do. And, you know, and last thing I'll say about that thought process is that our biggest goal with Limitless Minds, one of the things that we think about is how do we democratize it for every individual? There's 8 billion people in the world. 8 billion. 8 billion people in the world. When you think about 8 billion people living here on this planet, you know, about four or five about 5 billion of those people have smartphones nowadays, right? So how do we talk to everyone? And then the other part of it, too, is, is that if we're all 14-year-olds in, in, in the same class, okay, and let's just say there's 100 people in here, however many people are in here, okay, let's just say I go to the guidance counselor. What are you going to say to me? You're going to say I'm effed up. Something's wrong with him. Why? Why? we got to change that stigmatism. And that's what we're wildly obsessed with, with education. How do we talk about it? How do we work in the corporate space? Same thing in the corporate space, right? How do we work with elite individuals? How do we work with people that are working for their job interviews, the people that are trying to go to the next level or whatever they're trying to do? The, the, the thought process around mindset is everything. And so we've been on this thing for a while. And I think that a lot of people are talking about mental health nowadays. And when we look at it too, and I, I think about it, is I, I think about it as mental, mental wellness. Mm -hmm. Because how do, we, how do we make sure that, if I say mental health, it makes it, makes it sound like you're already sick. It makes it sound like you're already sick. Something's wrong with you, right? So how do we change those stigmatisms? How do we change that thought process? And that's what we're super passionate about. And I, I wanted to add something as an, op, as an observer of Russ, um, relative to your question about balance, right? you, you, frame, you, you reframed it to the efficiency, which, is, which I agree with, because when Russell was like at his most optimal, right? Performance in life and family and all those, those five things, right? What I notice is that it's not what you're adding to it. It's not what you're adding. It's really what you're subtracting. It's really your elimination or mitigation of negativity, for example, right? The people around you, the social media, the less social media, the better you are. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. That's true, right? Don't, <laughs> don't act like it's not. It's true. Like, 
the less social media, the better, right? The, you know, the people around you, your team, you have a nice, robust team, UNC both. The team has grown since 2012 when, when since Seattle Children's didn't know who you are, right? That team has grown. So then just like any of our businesses, our organizations, our startups, our, 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 our VC, comp, like VC organizations, like as, as, as we grow, right, we start to lose sight of the people around us. We start to lose sight of the kind of some of the biases and the blind spots we have. And so a lot of your efficiency and where you perform your best is when you're really efficient, really eliminating the things around you that are just noise, right? A lot of that's the negativity, the language. And so, you know, a lot of people always ask me, like, what is, how does Russell do this? And, you know, how much is he spending on his performance team and all these different things? Well, it's, it's not even about all those things he's implementing. He has the luxury of being able to do some of that stuff. Yep. But it's really the things that he's eliminating from his world. So I just want to add that. So how do you starve your distractions? Because that's one of the things yeah. that I learned from you guys. Yeah. It's like starving your distractions and really focusing in. So how do you do that? Well, a, a very, like... Lo like logistical way, for example, for me, practical way is during the season, you know, you go to the cafeteria, there's the TVs and everything. And all. I, I just walk right by the TV. I don't even look at it. Like I, I, no matter how good it is, how tough it is, whatever. I don't, I don't I just whoop, walk right by it. So I don't, I don't look at it when, when, it, when I'm at the facility, for example, there's, there's certain little things I do there. Yeah. But I think also too, um, you know, it, I, I think about the idea of, you know, you know, starve, starve your distractions, feed your focus. And so for me, I think, a big part of it, number one thing, is my language. I just choose not to say certain things. Like, just to eliminate certain things is a big part of it. And, and then I think the other part of it is, is that I want to come in with a plan every day, knowing that this is what's, what's going to allow me to be successful. But then I'm okay with the ability to adjust. I think the greatest players, the greatest business leaders know that, hey, I'm going to have a plan. We're going to go all in for it. But when i got to adjust, can I do that? Do I have the mobility and do I have the mindset that I, whatever I, whatever I face, whatever comes at me, whatever I, I'm dealing with, the more the merrier. Bring, bring whatever you have because that's, that's going to allow me to, to mold myself to be more successful. And so that's a big part of my mindset in terms of, of play. I, I like being down. Somebody had said to me the other day, like, gosh, I hate these close games. I'm like, I love them. <laughs> that's, a, that's, love a prob that's a problem for me. Yeah, yeah. Watch it. But like, it's like yeah. it's, when the game is tight, like, that's, that's even better. Yeah. You know, so, um, so that's a big part of it too. And I think Harry said it, you know, best. I think that who you have around you, you know, the, the coworkers you have, the people that you have around you, the, the, the world, the teammates, whatever you want to call it, you know, I, I think that's a really critical part to allowing your mind to be at the, at the highest, the, 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 the most prestigious level it could possibly be for yourself. Yeah. Hey, you know, the other, the other thing is, like, we're all human, right? So, like, not everybody has the, you know, the, the willpower to kind of walk by the TV, if you will. <laughs> and so, let's be realistic, right? I mean, what you're trying to do, eliminating negativity is, is just not going to happen, yeah. right? So, it's, so it, there's, you know, mechanisms, right, to be more mentally agile, right? And sometimes it's the people around us, right? You know what I mean? It's, it's like, you know, it's like a speedometer read. Like, when I go down, I have a, the road I go down to get to my house is called Evergreen Road. It's a 25-mile-per-hour road. It feels like it should be like 35, 45. So you drive that, you drive that fast. But then now they, they implemented the speedo, you know, that, that speedometer check, right? That tells you, yo, you're going 53, yeah, or you're guys going like you. 35, <laughs> or whatever it is. And you, what do you do, right? You immediately pump the brakes, yep. right? Yep. That's really an accountability partner, right? Yep. So like, you know, uh, what I, my wish for like a guy like Russ or my sister who plays at a high level at, at Stanford, plays basketball, like, is you got to have an accountability partner. And whether Russell knows that or not, I try to be Russ, one of Russell's accountability partners. I'm Charlie, who's in the front row, Tanisha. Like, we try to be accountability partners to the, you know, he's got to allow us to be, right? And so it's for each of us, whether we're, you know, a founder or an operator or, you know, a general partner at a, at a, at a venture capital company, like, like, allow yourself to have an accountability partner and trust that person to say, hey, you know, like, to check you on some of these things. And you do the same, right? So you can't go at this thing alone. You yep. cannot go at this thing alone. That's, that's part of the persona of our platform and our app that we're building, right, is that should be this, this is your mindset caddy. Right. This is your cat. This is the this is the this is the piece. This is the product that's going to help you with your stock selection. Right. The things you're doing, the choices you're making, decisions you're making on a daily basis. You have to have that because you can't go at it alone. Yep. You know what I mean? It's it's almost impossible to do, do to do it consistently. Yeah. So, piggybacking on that a little bit. So, can't go about it alone. Mm -hmm. And you're at the elite level with regards to being conscious around optimizing your mindset. How do you work with your team? To hopefully bring them on that journey because obviously everyone's going through their own journey around optimizing yeah. mindset especially new players in the league so how do you take that leadership position well that's a great question i think first of all they have to see you do it yeah. nobody wants to follow you if you don't lead it yourself yeah right if, you're, if your language isn't right and if you're talking and you're not this and that no well nobody's going to really want to follow you so for me 
they know what they're going to get every day. They don't, and, and the other team knows what they're going to get too. And so, so to me, that, that's, that's the number one standard, first of all. I think the second part of it is, is that, you know, for me, I, you know, I want to I be able to figure out, you know, how do I, if you have, if you have 100 guys on your team, let's just say, okay, we, we, have, we have 53, but let's just say you have 50, 50 people on your team. Okay, well, you know, 15, hopefully, 10, 10 to 15, maybe 20 of those people are going to be really good at what they do and really sharp and really like just, they've had experience, they've had, just had this natural thing. Then you have that middle of the road people, that's, let's just say the next 20, Okay, so you have, you have, let's just say you have 20 and 20. Okay, that, that's where, and then you have the last 10. The last 10 are the ones, a lot of times, that like not even sure how to even speak to themselves. Like they don't even, they never thought about it, they never heard about it. And then on a football team, that's what you get. On, yeah. on, I think in business, that's what you get. Yeah. And so to really be able to critically bring the, the 10 to the, tw- to, the ne- to the middle 20 and bring that middle 20 to the, to the top 20, I think that's really cool. And, and that even challenge you, especially in the, in the corporate space. Like, I think you're, you're really lucky if you if if you're top if you're really kind of even thinking about a top twenty percent, right? I mean, it's like a top ten percent, a bottom ten percent, and then you have that that middle eighty, right? You have that middle eight, and so that, that mighty middle, right? Yeah. That's the group you're to your point. You're trying to move like percent or two, because that, that's a just by numbers, that's a big group. So if you can leverage, if you can get those individuals to to buy in and embrace, right? But I mean, what you said is most important: role modeling, right? You, yeah. It's hard to ask somebody to do something that you haven't done or not aren't willing to do, right? And yep. so. That's the first step. So I could have this conversation probably for hours with you guys, but we only have about a minute left. So you guys are just a wealth of tactical nuggets and words of wisdom. So if there is one tactical nugget you could leave with the group here, what would it be? Yeah, I, I think the first thing I would say, the only thing I would say is, is that, you know, you have a choice every day how you speak. You have a choice every day how you speak. And a lot, there's a lot of obviously world-class business leaders, up-and-coming business leaders, whatever it may be, creators and everything else, but you choose. You choose. And don't look at anybody else. It's your choice. So if you want to be great, you have to choose the right thing to say. And I think that you have to be able to know that you have to put your feelings aside. This, to, success is, is, is not emotional. You know, the reality is, is that you have to be able to be able to connect with great emotion and great passion, but I can't be emotional. Uh-huh. And I think that that's a big part of it is, is that, you know, choose your, choose your language. You know, I, I choose to be neutral. I choose to lift people up when they're doing great. I choose to, when, when they're not doing great, hey, like, let's, 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 let's try to pick it up, but also give them, give them a picture of who they can be. And I think that's a big part of it, um, you know, in my world in particular. But I'm excited. I'm excited about the idea of democratizing mindset. And I know Harry has a couple things to say, so I don't want to <laughs> take the whole minute. But Bring us No, up. I mean, I, I'll just piggyback on what you said, really. I mean, you talked about choice. This is something that Trevor would say, and you probably remember this, and there's a couple folks I know recognize out here that I've that spent time with Trev. Choice is really an illusion, mm-hmm. right? Like, if you really want to be great, you know, if you have whatever goals you set forth, right, um, you really don't have really very many choices, right? There's a certain set of, it's a certain path, a certain yellow brick road that you're going to have to traverse to get it done, right? I mean, you know, Russell kn- knew back in 2010, 2011, 2012 that his margin for error we joked about the height and all that sort of stuff, right? But it's real. That, that, that was almost, you know, people said you wouldn't be able to play in the NFL because you were too short, right? Well, here we are, right? But your margin for error was, that was, that was smaller than, than, than some, right? And so for some of us out here, like our margin for error is really small, right? To go where, we, where, 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 you know, where we're trying to go. So choice is really an illusion. You can choose to do X, Y, and Z, but X, Y, and Z, is there gonna, it, it may not be, you know, what gets you, like, you know, where you run through the red tape, right? Yep. So, I mean, choice is an illusion. So just think about the choices you're making on a daily basis, right? And is it, is it a part of the, you know, is it part of the framework that's going to get you to where you're trying to go? Got Harry, I think you should tell them where, where they can find us. And, and then yeah, yeah. So Limitless Lim- Lim- Minds, I mean, our website is thinkbig-gofar.com. Thinkbig-gofar.com. The app's called Club Limitless. It literally just launched uh, this week. So it's, you know, it's MVP, it's first stage. I'd love for you to explore it. Um, you know, give us some feedback. I'm sure there'll be feedback to give. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, it's actually a code for you guys that are here. Um, up front, 22. Up front, 22. Club Limitless. So check it out. Um, explore. Um, and, uh, but you can always hit me up directly, you know, uh, for sure. And so come, come find us for sure. But uh, looking forward to working with, with any of you. Um, you know, if you have any questions, come find us. Awesome. Guys, yeah. thank you for everything thank you, you do yeah, and thank you for joining us. I need yeah. to have you interview me more often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>